good evening and welcome to you all. As has been, I think, presented or the information has been shared that uh, uh, with the help of Bill and many Nuggets Foundations, we are going to start demonstration project in sex work settings uh, in India in two sites primarily, one in brothel based, another in street based sex workers. Uh, just to give a brief overview of that, that this is uh, both these places, the programs uh, of HIV intervention uh, program which was started uh, followed an approach of empowerment as a result of which uh, I think in Calcutta where, which I am going to present now, where the sex workers came close and they, they developed their own organizations which represent more than 65,000 sex workers in, in a state of West Bengal. And I, I am not going much into that sort of things, but what is important is that this is a community-led and owned intervention, which is in operation since last 20 years. Presently, they are running 49 sites covering more than 40,000 sex workers. Uh, and if you see, there it is always uh, cited in many places that Shonagachi is, is a name of a red light district. And uh, uh, since it started from 1992 over the years, uh, it could uh, make a significant dent in improving the uh, condom use rate, reduction of STI, and stabilization of HIV prevalence among these communities. Uh, well, a large percentage of sex workers uh, now can negotiate effectively with their clients. But there are a percentage of sex workers, particularly newcomers. Uh, and there are a group of sex workers who are not that much capable of enforcing economies by their clients. Particularly uh, among their lovers uh, or fixed clients. So keeping that in mind, and last seven or eight years, we have been saying that uh, HIV is stable, but we like to bring it down. This might be the last leg of intervention. So to, to start the first leg of intervention, you can achieve very quickly, uh, say from 3% condom use to bring it by 50%, bring it to the level of 50%, didn't take more than one year. But then, uh, I think this improvement slowly fall down. It cannot be just doubled by the next years. And having all different uh, prevention tools available, there is an issue which was raised by the community members themselves, that we have been listening that among the MSM, WHO has provided guidelines for the use of uh, uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. What about the sex workers? So, but, but we felt that let's start with a better communications with the sex workers in general. And to start with, we developed a sort of picture book through which we shared with them uh, what is PREP, more in detail, and what could be the possibilities, uh, what are the issues and challenges, particularly focusing a uh, couple of things that how it could be used what are the existing guidelines and whether and to what extent uh, it could prevent uh, acquisition of HIV in addition to existing tools which are being used by them. So, but when you actually started these interactive sessions, uh, they felt that uh, why women, what I said earlier, uh, are not been focused in it, both in research as well as implementation, which has not been reflected in the guidelines. Uh, second was that uh, <coughs> what sort of quality of services would be offered to volunteers taking part in the study, keeping in view the forthcoming, four, four uh, I think, um, uh, demonstration project. And what would be the ownership of the community? As I said, it is a community-led and owned program. They run and manage the program, uh, the intervention as well as the research. So they felt that who and how that should be managed at the ground level and what would be their role in the overall program design and implementation. 
So to keep in that mind, we started one feasibility study in the recent past with the help of WHO. And the basic objective of this feasibility study before we uh, start a demonstration project, that we felt that out of all sex workers, there might be certain category of sex workers who are more vulnerable than others. Secondly, keeping in view the challenge of adherence to medicines, who could be the best candidates who could uh, adhere to the uh, medicine intake regularly. And what could be the uh, responses of other stakeholders uh, in the red light districts while we introduce that trait. And thirdly, whether, and fourthly, it was a sort of concern whether uh, initiation of break will have negative or dampening impact on the use of condom which is pretty high at this level. And some other challenges in connection to break are mobility of sex workers, concerned about possible negative impact of break on program regarding condom use, clinic clients might resort to break instead of using condom and adherence which is always an issue. And particularly this feasibility study will focus on who should receive uh, the pre to begin with. And so, so we are going to develop a sort of matrix uh, which will suggest us who are the most vulnerable and who can uh, be uh, better adhered to pray. So, but, but to begin with, I just share the last uh, slides. Uh, we just have some focus group discussions. And which shows uh, that uh, if you can see that the fourth, uh, this, those who want pray, uh, on an average 80%, uh, these are names are different red light uh, size, uh, you can see from 82% 82, uh, 82 to 56.5%, but on an average, after getting the information, they felt more and more inclined to use it. Of course, our next study will say how better we can uh, find out who could be the best candidates based on which we are likely to start the PrEP demonstration project by end of this year. Thank you.